What's up, fighter? I've got some advice after 17 years of marriage and five years in a relationship. That's 22 years I've been with my amazing woman, my amazing wife. I spent the last 14 years playing over a thousand shows, touring 22 different countries and become a top 40 billboard charting artist. I fired my record label to go out on my own as an independent artist to market and release my own music, selling thousands of albums and millions of streams. The question I always get is, how did I do it without a label and sell even more music? This podcast is here to show you the way. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply and share marketing strategies to grow my music business in a loyal fan base. And here's the best advice I can give you, and it's actually from Proverbs 15. It says, I'm reading it right here, a gentle answer turns away wrath. I'm going to say that again. A gentle answer turns away wrath. Has anyone ever asked you something? Maybe you're tired, maybe you're exhausted, and you responded back, oh, it's over there, or da 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 and you kind of just like yelled at them, you freaked out, and, and it was just like, whoa, you know what I mean? I've done that sometimes when my wife has asked me things, my mom, friends, bandmates, uh, and just responded just like harshly. And they're like, whoa, dude, put, put the gun down, man. But if I respond softly, even if they're harsh, it brings the conversation down and it calms things down. Okay, and so I encourage you, even if you're in a heated moment, or if that person is heated, don't bring your level up of intensity to their level, bring it down, bring the calmness down, bring the peace down, because I've noticed, even if my wife is riled up, or anyone is, and I bring my energy up, it just adds more gasoline on the fire, it does not help. Or if I bark back and try and be louder than the other person, you know? Because there's been times where it's like, I said something and I responded, and it's like immediately, it's like, oh, sorry, babe, I didn't, I didn't mean to, re to respond like that so harshly, you know what I'm saying? Um, another thing that I've learned, um, and I'm so blessed, you know, because me and my wife, you know, we didn't grow up rich or anything like that, and we struggled financially for a while, which I'm going to be talking about in my new book that's coming out. You're going to hear the whole story. But I'm so thankful, even though that we struggled financially for a while, we got on the same page. It was never her money and my money. It wasn't like you go pay these bills and I pay these bills. It was like we pay these bills together. These are, you know, our debts. This is our money come in. This is our car, our house. It wasn't his and hers. It was ours because we became one when we got married. We made a covenant before Almighty God. And so, not only did we get on the same page as that, and we did this thing as a team, you know, and so that sometimes takes some time, and you know, you might have certain ideas and thoughts about money, and she might have certain different thoughts about money. You need to get on the same page. And so we started to do that, obviously, with God's Word, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Total Money Makeover, Dave Ramsey, and we took all these things, and we came to our, our own conclusion, our own thoughts, and we decided to attack the debt together, and get financially free together, as opposed to letting the money and the, and the stress rip us apart, we used it to come together as a fighting force and we smashed it. You see, a three-corded strand cannot easily be broken, especially when you guys get on the same page. And sometimes that takes some working through, sometimes that takes some conversation, and it's like, whoa, you're thinking one thing, she's thinking another thing, and it's like, let's come together and, and, and get on the same page so we can smash this thing together. And if someone goes off for a second, it's like, whoa, again, soft answer. Hey, I thought our goal was to do this. Let's get back on the same page and let's keep smashing this thing. Let's keep smashing this thing, you know? Which leads me to the number three, which is grace, which is forgiveness. You know, I'm definitely not perfect, okay? My wife can vouch for that uh, many times over. My mom, my sister can vouch for that, anyone that knows me. I'm not perfect, I make mistakes. But there's this thing called grace. There's this thing called forgiveness. And not focusing on all the wrong things about your spouse or the person you're in a relationship, but start thinking about all the positive things, all the great things. You know, for entrepreneurs, I learned this from, from Garrett White, he shared a story 
that uh, you know when he, in his business he it wasn't where it wa he wanted it to be, and he started making up all these excuses in his mind that it's oh it's his wife's fault. You know, oh, that's the reason. And taking it all out on his wife, it's like, are you, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? He, he caught himself. He's like, no, I'm the problem. It's not my wife. It's not my spouse. I'm the problem. You got to fix what's right with you and stop putting the blame and saying, oh, if they only did this, if they only did that. No, maybe you need to lead the way, especially as a man. For all the men I'm talking to, you are the leader. You need to lead the way in things and be the example and if you haven't been, it's time to step up and be a man and be the man you've been called to be and lead and be the role model, okay? You, you need to be that. But as far as this blame game and all this stuff, whether you are a man or a woman and you're, all you're doing is focusing on the negative, well, then you're going to see, that's all you're going to see is you're going to see negative. But why don't you focus on all the things that you love about that person and that you cherish and why you married them in the first place? All right. Here's the second, or I don't know if this is the fourth or fifth, but this is really important. And I learned this, or got you know a lot of examples from this from Michael Hyatt. I appreciate that guy. And that's like going on dates with your spouse, man. Going on dates with your wife, your husband, um, and taking that time, especially if you got kids and stuff. Like you need that time together in that quiet time with no distractions, no TV. No phones and just hang out and bond. Sure, you can watch a movie, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But the point is, is like sometimes it takes like a good, I don't know, seven, eight, even sometimes 24 hours of just the two of you hanging out, reconnecting. And this was huge for me when I would go on the road um, for a long time and then I'd finally come back off the road and I hadn't seen my wife. We need some time to reconnect get reacquainted almost in a way and get back on that same page so we can now go kill it together you can't just expect like oh because we've been married so many years you know we can be apart all the time and not need that connection no you got close because you spent time together you were praying together you were dreaming together you were visioning your life together you were planning together you know it's the summertime right now and we are thinking about and planning what is our vacation going to look like? What are the different things that we want to do? Because things don't just happen. A successful marriage, a successful relationship doesn't just happen by happenstance. You need to put effort into it. You need to think like, oh, it's our anniversary coming up. It's birthday coming up. Hey, how about just because I love this person and let's treat them um, the way I treated them when I just started dating them. You know, there's a book called Date Your Wife, I think it is. It's, I think it's by Garrett White. I haven't even read it. But the idea of dating your wife and staying in that chase that just because you caught the girl, or you got the guy, that, oh, you don't need to treat them well anymore. You don't need to even take care of your body anymore. You don't need to take care of your health. You're just going to let everything just fall by the wayside. Well, you know what happens? Not only will your health fall by the wayside if you don't take care of it, your relationship will fall by the wayside. The love, you know, if you want better love in your life, uh, give love. Show love to your spouse. Um, when I was going through a tough time, I remember reading that book. Um, oh, I can't even remember. I think it's something fire, not left behind. I can't even remember. Some good book um, that I read. <laughs> I can't remember right now. Somebody will probably post it in the comments. Um, but I think it was by Kurt Cameron or something like that. Uh, but um, it's, it's about just really loving on your wife, man. And it saved so many marriages. But, like, be intentional. You got to be intentional is really what it comes down to and, and staying on that. You know, anything that you want to die, stop feeding it, okay? Stop feeding it. If you want a bad habit to die, stop feeding it. If you want alcoholism to die in your life and don't want to be addicted to alcohol, stop drinking it, you know? If you want a plant to die, stop feeding it water and light. If you want a relationship to die, stop feeding it love. If you want it to grow, feed it love, feed it nourishment. You know, uh, I hope that hits home for some people. You know, I hope you just, you know, lo go love your wife today. Go love your husband. Surprise him with a nice text. You know, text him every day. Text him something funny. Text him something I'm just thinking about you. Do something out of the ordinary that lets them know, hey, that, that you love him. My hero, Peter J. Daniels, used to always say he used to bring his wife breakfast in bed every single day. You know, with toast and marmalade and coffee or tea or whatever. Um, and that inspired me, you know. I don't, I don't bring my wife breakfast in bed every day, but I do bring her Starbucks uh, uh, very frequently. You know what I'm saying? Um, and surprise her. And, um, you know, and, I, and we can all do better. Sometimes we go up, sometimes we go down. But the point is, be intentional and give. You know, you, you want to you wanna invest in this relationship for the long term. 
You know, you're not going to be working for your boss forever, but you're going to be married longer than that. I didn't marry hip hop. I didn't marry rock and roll. I married that amazing wife. So why don't I put more time and thought and energy into that? Because I'm going to be with that way longer than I am going to be with music or anything else. You know what I'm saying? And who has been by my side? Who have you been by your side? So I encourage you, go invest in it today. You'll be glad you did. Love conquers all. I want to remind you that a fighter is someone who never fails. A fighter is someone who never quits. Peace. So if you're a struggling artist and you're just trying to figure out this music industry, you want to go full time with your music, you want to get noticed on social media or learn how to launch an album, an EP or just get your music more marketed out there, I want to encourage you to check out my coaching program called Fanbase University. Every single month I jump on the phone two times with my students and I coach them and I teach them how to market their music, how to get noticed, how to handle booking agents, record labels and just get their music out there. Also, you get access to exclusive training. You get in interviews with music industry professionals. If you want to find out more and not do this on your own, not struggle because I've wasted thousands of dollars on my career and I, now I want to coach other artists. Check out my program, fanbaseuniversity.com or click the link below to find out more info.